deep and wonderful I, a wonderful I, a beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright. For all who obey the Savior dear, forever shall stay, forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. Well, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. The glorious news I tell and sing as onward I go. Onward I go, that those who are still astray in sin, my Savior may know. I want them to sing His praise above some beautiful day. For glory to Him who died for me. I'm going that way. Well, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus, the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Well, I'm clinging to Him. Never to stray, never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. Trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory and land. And oh, I believe that when we meet, well done, he will say, well done, he will say, for trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way. Well, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus, the Savior, I adore, is with me each day. Well, I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. Let us, let us know this 343, then we'll have scripture reading and prayer. be very long. <clears throat> it won't be very long till this short life shall end. It won't be very long till Jesus shall descend and then the dead in Christ will walk the best of Christ to meet the Lord and King up yonder in the sky it won't be very long it won't be
be very long till Jesus shall appear. That day is drawing near. Will you be ready there to meet the ransom throne? Get ready for that day. It won't be very long. It won't be very long till here we cease to roam. It won't be very long till all the saints get home. And then with smiling face, we'll walk the streets of gold. And sing the Savior's praise, where saints are never old. It won't be very long, it won't be very long, till Jesus shall appear. That day is drawing near, will you be ready then to meet the ransom throne? Get ready for that day. It won't be very long. Verse 4. It won't be very long till earth shall pass away. It won't be very long till works of men decay. But Jesus has prepared a happy dwelling place. For all who look above and trust his matchless grace, it won't be very long, it won't be very long, till Jesus shall appear, that day is drawing near, will you be ready then to meet the ransom throne? Get ready for that day. It won't be very long. And now we'll have scripture reading and prayer. Amen. The more I hear that song, the more truer it rings in my ears. It won't be very long. This morning's scripture will come from the book of John, chapter 21. Again, the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. I'm a little excited to hear the script, the the sermon this morning, because I love these scriptures right here. Again, that is the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. If you are there, follow along with me. Verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that the disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. 
Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep, my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee. And carry thee whither thou wouldest not. They spake, this spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. At this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Brother McClure as he will lead us in prayer. Let us bow and go to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us here to your house of worship. Watch over those who may be still on their way. Watch over those who may be traveling, those who may be sick, shut in, and those who may be grieving. Thank you for another year for blessing us and getting us through this year, especially with all this things that's going on in the world with the pandemic and everything. Heavenly Father, keep us on a straight and narrow and let us do what the scientists and people who tell us what to do about this virus. Let us stay fast on it so we can make it to the new year. Heavenly Fathers, thank you for the leadership, the blessed leadership that we can lead us, especially Brother Atwater, to the new year. And let us take this message in our everyday lives. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. As we prepare for this morning's lesson, let's turn to page number 437. Page number 437. Where could I go? In the space of 437, after which Brother Atwater will come before us 
uh, with this morning's lesson. If you have it, let's all stand together. Living below in this so sinful world and hardly a comfort can afford or and strive in alone to face temptation and tell me where Lord, where could I go? Oh, where could I go? I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, and need to save me in thee and tell me where over to the Lord. Birds are kind and I love them every one and we get a long and sweet accord and but so needs manna from up and tell me where to the Lord where could I go oh, where could I go I'm seeking a refuse for my soul oh, Oh, and he, and to save me in thee, and tell me where, over to the Lord, life here is grand, and with friends I love so dear, and come, heard I get from God's own word, heard, and yet, when I face the chilling hands of and tell me where over to the Lord where could I go oh where could I go I'm seeking a refuge for my soul oh and need and a friend to save me and thee and tell me where over to the Lord. Be with you on today. God has again been good to us. This is the North Shore Church of Christ, 326 Julian Street in Waukegan, Illinois. Those who follow us computer-wise, we want you to know we love you. To the drive-bys, we love you. To those who are sick and limited, we love you. Let us pray for Latrell. I took that personally and I want to get his phone number from his mother so that I can talk to the young man, uh, do our best to get him on a youthful uh, work toward his potential. Let us continue to pray for the Stevens family. Terrence is here, pray for Mason and his mother, Ariana, that things will be well with them. The stewards, let us keep them at the top of your pecking order of prayer. Sister Stewart, we miss her. Brother Stewart, we miss him. And let us continue to pray for those great people. This is the 52nd Sunday of 2020. I wonder how many of them did you meet with the Lord in worship? He made it possible for you to be alive through this particular point in time. Um, <clears throat> I would ask that you continue to address your bulletin. Sister Atwater untiringly puts together uh, the prayer list, the parents. Let us pray for Michael Roberts and all of those that are in that particular section of our bulletin, keep them on your prayer list. On Christmas Day, which was the 25th, after I had 
been blessed with St. Nick stopping by. After he had stopped at all of your houses, he stopped at mine, smelling somewhat like chitlins. Ah, <laughs> uh, figuratively speaking, with black-eyed peas in his beard, uh, I decided that I would come by the house of worship around 11 o'clock. And uh, no one was here. I came in and I sat on the front seat. And I prayed for all of you. And not only I prayed for you, but I prayed for our nation. And all that we have dealt with in 20. I pray that the Lord would continue to put a protection around us that we can be better people. And then I started thinking about our sister Gladys Hicks and sister Ruth Tyler and all of those who have passed on. All of us are just traveling through. No matter how young you are, you're just here temporarily. Yes, we have a vaccine now, two vaccines. But that will not override the Lord's decision to let you live. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Learn not to be hard-headed. Don't be prideful. And if you owe somebody a confession, don't delay. Because tomorrow may not be yours. The theme for this year was faith in Christ. Fight for Christ. Finish with Christ. It is my hope that we will finish this year with Christ. There is no, no, no other entity being that we can finish with other than Christ that would do good for us from now on in the future. You might try your doctor. You might try your employer. You might try your medication. You might try your TV, you might try your house, your car, your money, whatever. There's nothing better than Jesus. When it's all said and done, he is the one that will make your medicine work. He is the one that will allow you to get in your car and ride. He's the one that will allow you to eat that caramel cake from Sister Lina. He is the one that will uh, allow you to eat that uh, chicken and dressing. You know, I like chicken and dressing. My wife cooks some chicken and not turkey and dressing, chicken and dressing. In fact, chicken and dressing is better than turkey and dressing. I just thought I'd. I said, what could I say to a great congregation that I love so much? You need to be lifted. Ah, oh, this is the last Sunday of this year. We will never see 2020 again on a Sunday. Once it's passed, it's gone. As time trickles away, you cannot turn the clock back. Ah, you may live in the past, try to live in the past, but it won't work. The Lord forces tomorrow to come and today to be itself. We need a year in lift because life is in limbo. And, and it has not just started being in limbo. It has always been in limbo. Uh, 
Sometimes it's not because of our own doing, but life in general is in limbo. It is a shaky situation. You don't know whether you will take your next breath. Life is in limbo. The inner man is topsy-turvy. You're sitting there behind those masks and you seem to be calm, but inside you're topsy-turvy, wondering where I will be tomorrow, wondering where I will be by June of 2021 if I see it, wondering what's going to come next, wondering who, I, who I'm going to date, who I'm going to marry, if you happen to be Nia and uh, Jewel. Some of my young ladies I see. Life is topsy-turvy. Our focus of the future is foggy. We're sitting here and uh, Sister Jones asked us to pray for our nation. We've been in a mess before. And every mess we've been in as a nation, we've come out of those messes. Don't get so caught up of the man that's out playing golf when he ought to be running the nation. And if you're going to play, don't play so openly. Do it secretly. Don't just... The future seems foggy. We're looking for truth to guide us and truth seems to be scarce. Everybody wants to lie, and everybody wants to act like they are saying that which is legitimate. You don't know what is legitimate and what is not legitimate. T truth seems to be uh, so, so minor. It seems to be not available. And truth is hard to determine, and when you hear it, you don't believe it. You just don't know what truth is. President game plan won't sign for my stimulus check. It don't make no difference whether it's six hundred or two thousand. Just sign something. Nashville is blown up by somebody who is has an inner mind that is topsy turvy. They can't handle their own pressure, so they put pressure on somebody else. Republicans are caught up on their own gallows, afraid of change. But change is going to come. You might as well get ready for it. Change is going to come. And while we are in a dilemma, we need to be lifted, but yet and still, the virus still viciously attacks and attacks and attacks and attacks. No matter what we do, it still attacks. And the only one that can really stop that is the Lord himself. We need to be lifted. Jesus Next week I'll give you our new theme. But Jesus said something like, if you, if you, if you do it to the least of these, you do it to me. Ah. Uh, I'm not going to deal with his least list, but I'm going to deal with a biblical listing of the least of these to help you get a perspective so that when next week when we present our new theme, you, you, you'll, be up to, you'll be up to speed. We need a lift. I, I want you to be better than you have been. I want you to do more than you've done. I want you to go where you have not gone. I want you to be able to see what you cannot see. The least need a lift. Terry, who are the least? It's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's like, it's like a person that is left out, a person that lacks, a person that is lowly. How well, that's the, how somebody like Ruth. Ruth was a left out kind of lady. 
She, she, she came from a left out Moab. Ruth was somebody that really had no God. She had uh, miscellaneous gods. And when she hooked up with Naomi, she was, she was still a left out. And Naomi told her, I'm going back to my home. You go on back to yours. And Ruth said, I'm not going back to my home. Left out. The least is somebody who is excluded and exiled. I call on Daniel. Be like Daniel. He was an exile. Carried off into a foreign land, Babylon. He had to sit under a crazy man called Nebuchadnezzar. But yet and still, he was the least. There's another one that comes to mind. Ah, there's a man called Samuel. Samuel was a special baby. His mother was barren, and she prayed for a son. And when she got a son, she said, Lord, I'm going to give my baby to you because you gave him to me. I'm going to give him to you. And Samuel served the Lord. But finally, Samuel became old. And do you know what God's people said? Well, he's old. His boys don't live right. And he, we don't want Samuel to be our leader. Give us a king like all the other nations. Why do we always want to be like somebody else? And not appreciate what we have. Samuel, chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. Because he was aged, they said, let's get rid of Samuel. Let me tell you something. Don't get rid of old men. Some people are saying, well, Biden is too old. I feel more comfortable with him. I know he's sitting in the wings waiting on January the 20th, and he knows what moves he's going to make. Yes, we got a man that's trying to burn the nation down, but Biden has got his water ready. He's got a team with the water ready. They don't have to transfer power properly. He will already have the power. He'll know how to handle the power. And the Lord will see that he handles the power because you all will continue to pray for the nation. Even in the evangelical churches, they are starting to talk about the fact that they've had racism within the church. We need to be lifted. There are some who are threatened. They are the least, kind of like John the Baptist. John was a forerunner of Jesus. And one, one occasion, John said, Behold the Lamb of the world that takes away our sins. And Jesus asked him to baptize. John felt like he wasn't worthy to baptize Jesus. If the Lord tells you, you are worthy. Because John was an honest man, because John was a good man, because John questioned Herod's lifestyle, his, his, his wicked lifestyle, the, 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 the lady, the lady, the lady, the lady dance. You know, we, we all like dancing with the stars. So dancing with the stars has been around for a long time. She danced, and, and, and of course, he said, now what do you want? What do you want? I want John's head. They brought his head in on a dinner plate. We need to be lifted. We need to be lifted. The disciples needed a lift. Isom said he liked John 21. I like John 21 too. But when you look at the Gospel of John, chapter 21, in verse number 3, Simon Peter said, I go fishing. Always, ladies and gentlemen, I love you so much, but be careful when you say I. Be, 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 be careful with that personal pronoun I. Because you know, that, might, that might, be, might, might, might be too big for you to say I, I, what I am going to do, I, 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 I. You, 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 you better start saying we. Draw somebody else into the picture. At least bring Jesus with you. Don't, don't just say I'm going fishing because you, you might not come back. 
He says, I go fishing. They, the other disciples, said, we're going to go with you. You know, it's amazing how blind will follow the blind and both fall in the ditch. It's amazing they were ready to follow a cursing, swearing, denying Peter to go out on the water on the Sea of Tiberias fishing because he said, I go fishing. They didn't ask who he was taking with him. They didn't suggest that we pray before we go out on the sea. They just said, he said, I go, and they said, we go with you. As if Peter can direct them and lead them somewhere where they can have success. But you understand that success only comes by Christ. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And they out there all night. You know, it's amazing what we'll do all night. But we don't have time for the Lord all night. They fished all night. How in the world? I, I'm not a fisherman myself. I just eat clients fish. But I'm not a fisherman. But I believe, I believe if I was out there all night, I'm going to catch something if I'm out there all night. I've got to be able to catch something. Goodness gracious. All night. Sometimes the Lord will talk to the fish. When we don't want to be caught with him, he'll talk to the fish that we're trying to fish for. And steer the fish away from their hooks. See, the animals respond to Jesus. It's just that when we when we intervene with the animals, we we, we mess them up. We, we we put them in places where they don't belong. You don't bring a chimpanzee into your house as a pet. You don't put a lion in there as a cat. They're not made for that. They they they're made to be where they're supposed to be. You don't put a, have an alligator as a pet with a rope around his neck to guide him around. You just don't do that. You know, alligator belongs where alligator belongs. You understand what I'm saying? It's amazing how we'll put stuff where it not, does not belong. And furthermore, we'll put ourselves where we don't belong. Amen. They caught nothing. But when the morning was come, now notice, they were out there all night. Jesus stood on the shore. Now, you know, this Jesus didn't go with him. He just stood on the shore. See, sometimes the Lord just sat back and look at, how, look at our silliness. See, that we, see I, actually, in many ways, in 2020, we were silly. We got a man right now who wants to overturn the election. That's silly. The people have already voted. They have already spoken. It's over with. Learn how to be a good loser. That's silly. Don't go over there somewhere now and start a war in the next two weeks. That's silly. Feed the poor. That's silly. Don't, don't, don't be sitting down not signing the check and people are going hungry. You see all the lines out there. Feed the people. Well, if you give them too much money, they won't go to work. Well, don't, don't let the Lord handle that. Give them what they give them the money. We'll handle that part of it later. It's too bad I'm not president. Goodness gracious. Lord have mercy. Oh, when the morning was come. Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. You can be so close to Jesus and still don't even know him. I contend we got members in the Church of Christ that really don't know Jesus. They, they, they talk the Jesus language, but they don't live the Jesus life. 
See, you have to live the Jesus life to talk the Jesus language. Then Jesus said unto them, children. You know, he didn't say men. He said children. See, sometimes we are so childish. You know, we, 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 we act childish. We, 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 we live childish. We, we think childish. We have a teenage playground mentality. We, Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And what Jesus is saying now, you're still acting like children. Acting like children. Have you any me? He said, no. Well, you've been out there all night. You ain't got nothing to eat. Goodness gracious. Now, Jesus knows why they don't have anything to eat, because he, he told the fish, don't y'all get caught, fish. Y'all hang with me. And then he said unto the apostles, now cast your net. See, you just need a lift. You need a lift. Cast your net. Now stay in the same water. Stay on the Sea of Tiberias. You ain't got to go to another pond up in Wisconsin somewhere. Just stay where you are. Right where you are. Now you, you, you dropped your net on the left side of the boat. Now just drop it on the right. You don't even have to move your boat. Just drop it on the right side. That's all you got to do. He didn't say. He didn't, he didn't say that. He didn't say this there. He told the fish now, go on over there and let them catch them. See, the purpose of a fish is to be eaten. See, man has dominion over the fish. So if man has dominion, the Lord has dominion. They cast, therefore, and they were not able to draw up the multitude of fishes. Now, they were out there all night. We, 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 we've, been, we've been dealing with the virus all this year. Yeah, so some say it's going to disappear. Some say it's a hoax. Yet people are still dying. See, sometimes you need to call on Jesus. Jesus is the master doctor. Well, he, he ain't going to do nothing. Well, you don't know what he's going to do. Give him a try. As a matter of fact, for you to say that is a blessing. See, a lot of the things we do and say, it's, it's a tremendous blessing. And they caught a multitude of fish. Therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved said unto, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. John says it's the Lord, Peter. So, so Peter didn't even know who the Lord was. Now, notice this. Christ had to teach professional fishermen how to fish. See, sometimes we don't know how to deal with our own children. Christ has to teach us how to deal with them. See, sometimes the Lord, what the Lord does, the Lord will, 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 will cause us to have to deal with tough children to see if we know how to handle tough children. Because sometimes we ourselves are tough, hard-headed, don't want to listen, think we know it all. But sometimes we need a lift. And we need the right kind of lift. Now notice something else. In verse number 9 he says, As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid there on and bread. Jesus is getting ready to give them a, give them a smorgasbord board breakfast. You know, ain't nothing better than smoked fish. Lord have mercy. Amen. The last time I was out, I see Matthew said, no, the last time I was in Seattle, I went down on the wharf, and they had that smoked salmon down on the wharf. And you know what they do? What they would do is give you a piece of it free, no charge at all. Lord, heaven, you get one piece, then you want to buy the whole store after that. Because it just works on your taste. It's kind of like when you go into Krispy Kreme, they give you a free donut, a free, you know, a, just, just a plain old glazed donut. Real hot, just coming off the conveyor. And that, that works on your taste. Then you want to buy three dozen. <laughs> the Lord knows how to work on us. The Lord knows just, I know, uh, you know, just, just get us, to just touch us with a little sickness and, and, and touch us with a little unemployment and just touch us with a few things. And then all of a sudden, Jesus looked pretty good. 
So we, we, so sometimes we, we, we want to lay in the bed now. Now we start service at 9 o'clock, get you out around 11. That's pretty early. That's pretty good. Let's get real good. Now, now we're getting late coming at 9 o'clock. We need a lift. We need a lift. We need a lift. Jesus said unto them, bring the fish which you have not caught. Now see, Jesus used that fish. And then Jesus said, now come and dine. I'm, I'm, I'm the cook. I'm the chef. I taught you how to fish. Now I'm going to feed you. All right? And now they had, to be, they, had, they had to be taught. They failed at fishing. Now they're going to be fed by Christ in verse number 12. And none of the disciples asked him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? And Jesus taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. And finally, Jesus got to where he wanted to be. It was not about fishing. It was not about eating fish. But it's about love. You see, love will lift the least of us. Not just any kind of love, but love will lift the least of us. Notice in verse 15. So when they had dined after the meal is over, it's kind of like after. Ah, my wife fixed all that stuff. I, I had one plate with my black eyed my purple hull peas, Sister Harry, and uh, chicken and dressing, green. And uh, I emptied that plate and I went back to reload. <laughs> My wife said, are you going again? <laughs> well, I only get this about once every year. <laughs> I got to make this thing count. Goodness gracious. This, 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 this is not fast food at McDonald's. This is top-notch stuff. Goodness gracious. Ah, uh, then so 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 that was the that was the lift. That's the lift of the holiday. You know, relationship. Now we, we, we know we don't know when Christ was born. You, you notice that the wise men they gave gifts to Jesus. 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 Who you give your gifts to? Now, 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 now let me help you out now. Don't, 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 don't get scared. I just want you to know that they, they gave gifts to Jesus. Now we give gifts to each other. But, 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 on the Lord's day, we give to Jesus. Now, now, now if you're doing it right, you're going to give to him 52 times a year at a minimum. You give to Jesus. Then secondarily, you give to each other. And, and, and when you give to each other, Christ said, if you do it to the least of these, then you've done it unto me. So there's two ways to do it. You give to Christ on the Lord's day, and you give to each... Uh, oh, okay. Now y'all see it now, don't you? Okay, okay. No, no, nothing wrong with giving gifts. Just make sure you give to Jesus when his time comes. Don't cut it out. Give to it. Then we give to each other. Nia said, I wanna, I'd like to give some things for our young people. And we did. We did, we did. You know why we did that? Because you give to the least of these. And when you give to the least of these, you're giving to the Lord. But also you must give to the Lord. Because he's the, the maximum of these. You take care of both. Now watch this. The reason you give to the Lord is because he is love. And love will lift the least. 
Lord, have mercy. So, so Jesus says in verse 15, he pulled Peter aside. You know why he pulled Peter aside? Because Peter said, I'm going fishing. See, Peter, you, you see, when you got a big mouth, the Lord's going to test the big mouth person. All right? So, 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 so Peter said, I'm going fishing, and he, and he failed. Now the Lord comes back on the other side and says, no, 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 Peter. Peter, 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 Simon, Peter, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Do you truly, do you truly love me, Peter? And Peter said, thou knowest that I love you. Yeah, how many of you been around people like that? You, you know I love you, child. And they, they're ready to cut your head off. You, 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 you know, you, you know, you know, you and I, we are, we were ace moon cool. We, we got it all going on. Yeah, you, you, you know we together. Lord have mercy. And then when you really need them, where are they? He said, you know I love you, Lord. He said, well, then if you love me, then feed my lambs. You notice he started out by saying, feed my lambs. He, he didn't say feed the sheep. He said, feed my lambs. He, you know why he said feed the lambs? Because they've been acting like children. See, when you act like a child, you feed the children. Now, by feeding the children, at least they might, t- they might teach you something. I remember Christ said on one occasion, suffer little children, come unto me, forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So learn something from the child. Lord, have mercy. And sometimes, sometimes we, we, we don't appreciate our children like we ought to. And, and you got to learn to appreciate the children because the children hold no grudges. The children, they, they, they forget about yesterday. The children, you, you, if you don't do them right yesterday, they're okay tomorrow. Just, 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 up, just remember the children. Because one time you was a child. The problem is we get old and still want to act like a child. That's the problem. That's the problem. Peter, do you love me? You need to be lifted, sir. You need to be lifted, Peter. Then in verse number 16, he says, he said to him again the second time, Simon, he didn't even call him Peter. He said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Yea, Lord, you, you know I love you. Now he says, feed my sheep. Now, if you feed the lambs, you ought to be able to feed the sheep. Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love you. Now watch verse 17. He said to him now the third time, Simon, still didn't call him Peter. He said, Simon, do you love me? And Peter was grieved now. You know why he's grieved? Because now... The Lord is registering on his history. He denied him three times. Now let's see if you can love me three times. You know that I love you, Lord. Now watch this. Love will lift us as I close. Love works by feeding. Y'all with me now? Everything in this chapter is dealing with feeding. First off, you, you, you got some hungry disciples. They've been out there all night, ain't got nothing to eat. What did the Lord do? He had to feed them. He had to teach them how to fish so he could feed them. In other words, he, 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 he made them go out and drop the line in the water. See, sometimes the Lord may give us too much and we take him for granted. Whatever your age is, you didn't deserve to live as long as you lived thus far. And sometimes we take the Lord for granted. We're going to leave here right now and never look at this text again until I bring it up in a sermon. We take him for granted. Don't stop taking him for granted. For one day he'll call your number. When he calls your number, you will answer. When I say love works by feeding, all right, how do you do that, Terry? Help us out as you close out. You feed the word to people. We all need a word. Some people just talk, but they don't give us a word. See, the word is that which is of substance. 
See, we need some substance, substance, substance. I was sitting, sitting on this seat, as I was saying, on Christmas Day, and I got to thinking about my son. I noticed something. I, I was walking through on security in the facilities. He's traveling. I was walking through. I noticed we got 10 semi-tractors. 10 semi-tractors. I called him up. I said, how many tractors we got? He said, 10. I said, do you know what you're doing? He said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm doing. There are young men who want to do but don't know how to do. So I'm reaching out and pulling in young men to be truck drivers. Because when you're on the road, that's all you see now is trucks. And there's one truck you see more than others. It's that truck that's got that arrow like this here. That arrow like this here. Uh, you know, every third truck, you see that arrow like this here. Okay. And in your, in your neighborhood, you see that arrow like this coming through your neighborhood. All right. Truck, 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 truck. He said, what I'm doing, Dad, is, is, is I'm going to help some young men. He said, now, I, I don't need to do it myself, but I just see this as a way. First of all, I, I, it's going to help me to do more. The more I can do, the more I can do for them. And if a young man gets in a truck and drives for about 10 years, he can make himself a fortune. The problem is, you got to work. You've know, you got you to put your line on the right side of the boat. See, if you don't put your line on the right side of the boat, you won't catch any fish. When you work to feed the least of these, the Lord will bless you. Give them substance. You, you feed the word. You educate to participate. Neil said, Lord, you know, we, we, we got to give some toys to the kids. I said, well, let, let's figure this thing out. We're going we we we, we, we to deal with toys. And the elders got together, and we worked that whole thing out. And somebody came in with a little donation, helped us out with a little bit nice donation. You feed the least of it. You educate to participate. When you do something, somebody wants to help you do what you're doing. If it's of substance. Not only that. We need to be, we need to emancipate by truth. People need to hear the truth. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. It will emancipate you when you know the truth. Stop listening to lies. Now, you know, I, I listen to it, and my wife get on me, you, you, you always watch the MSNBC and CNN, and I, I just want to see what lie, the lie they're telling today. Amen. Because, you see, the, 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 advantage, the advantage you have as a Christian, you can listen to what they're saying, then you go back to the Word of God. See, every, every, every time I see Trump, I see Nebuchadnezzar. You understand what I'm saying? You, you, and the Lord will have him eating grass eventually. But the, the, the Lord works to know. The, word, the Lord works the way he wants to work. The Lord works in due time. The Lord ain't going to give you a check when you want your check. Nine times out of ten, when you get that similar check anyway, you're going to go out there and blow it anyway. And ain't gonna give none to the Lord. Oh Lord, I got to make my house fair. I gotta get my car fair. I gotta go get me some clothes. I gotta pay off this. I gotta pay off that. I gotta pay my life bills. I gotta pay everything else. You pay everybody else but the Lord. And then when you feed, you deliver people by divine guidance. Let me close by the, give you a culminating synopsis. Love will lift the least. Love, ladies and gentlemen will lift the deceptive to honesty. Just ask Jacob, the crookedest man in the Bible. Love lifted him to honesty. Love lifts the jealousy to genuineness. Just ask Joseph. He was surrounded by jealousy in his household. But it lifted himself as well as his brothers to genuineness. Love lifts slaves to freedom. Just ask Moses. He was a slave, but he was lifted to freedom. Love will lift the aged, the old person to relevance. 
Just ask Samuel. He was an old man, but he became powerful. Lord will lift the lady to fill the gap. Just ask Deborah. The Lord placed Deborah because the men were derelict in their responsibility. Don't overtake that lady. Don't run with that too fast now. But there are times you need to fill the gap. Let Lord have mercy. Love will lift the, 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 the love will lift the crowd, the, the out crowd to the in crowd. All you got to do is just ask Ruth. Ruth was an outsider, but she became an insider. As a matter of fact, she's in the Hall of Fame. She's listed in the lineage of Jesus. Ruth, 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 Ruth married, married, married Boaz. They had Obed, and Obed had Jesse, and Jesse had David. And down the line of the David came Christ. We find that love, love will lift the murdering wife stealing to repentance. Oh, you just talk to King David. Love will work on you. Love will do that. Love will lift a man to die for a good cause. Just ask John the Baptist. He had his head cut off, but he died for a good cause. Love will lift a cursing man to a blessing man, a racist man to a, a, a get along righteous man. Just ask Peter. Just ask Peter. Love will lift a murderous man to a life builder. Just ask Paul. Love will lift a blind man to a seeing man. Just ask Bartimaeus. Love, love, love will lift a sin loaded person up on a cross. And then if I be lifted up, just ask Christ. Love will lift you. It'll lift you. It'll lift you. Love will lift you. May God bless you. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for every day that you give to us. It is because of you. When we fish at your direction, you will bring the fish our way. When we do it your way, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. You said, I go away and prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. And as we end this year, we say thanks. We say thanks for the good. We say thanks for the bad. And we say thanks for the ugly. It has made us better people. And if you bless us to see another year, we're going to try to get you higher up in our pecking order and place you where you ought to be. Because without you, we will not see 2021. May God bless us. Amen, amen, amen. There might be somebody in the audience who need to get your life together. You need to get your life together. You need to uh, want to be baptized. You can be baptized. I will sing and be and sing.